Hi, so it is uh, January uh, 21st, 2019, and uh, <clears throat> I have to share this with you because uh, it's from Newsweek. I find this absolutely fascinating. It's the, um, I know it's only 21st here, but this is dated uh, January 25th, 2019. Um, anyway, uh, it's an article about the, um, the fact that the Democrats have... Uh, you know, control of the lower chamber now in the, oh, I don't know if they call it the lower chamber. It's the um, House of Representatives, right? They have two chambers, just like in Canada. Uh, the Americans have uh, two chambers, uh, the lower chamber, House of Representatives, and they have an upper chamber called the Senate, just like we do in Canada, except our lower chamber is just called the House of Commons. The only difference there. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the first week of, of January uh, 2019, uh, Nancy Pelosi, who's now leader of the House, because the Democrats kind of uh, did have a blue wave, they, they, they uh, uh, have control now of the House, as she gave a speech, which I listened to when it, when, when it was live. Um, and this is the Newsweek article. It's, it's entitled, uh, Great Expectations Here. A new class of fiery progressives is taking Congress by storm, but some Democrats worry their own party is the one that could feel the burn. Yeah. Anyway, uh, new House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is already pulling some daft maneuvers, clearly inspired by the demands of this left flank sassing Trump about giving him a dollar for the wall. Well, he wants five billion. Uh, while clearly aiming for a kind of bipartisanship that the House Republicans never bothered with and that the fire-breathing newcomers might not prefer either. In her first day speech, she quoted Ronald Reagan and then George H.W. Bush to thundering silence from Republicans. At one point, Nancy Pelosi turned to the right side of the aisle and said very mildly, you don't applaud for Ronald Reagan? That fascinates me. I don't... Uh, you know, I watch a lot of uh, news. Um, no one's picked up on this story. No one's picked up on this story. Why are modern Republicans quiet when their former leaders are quoted? I think it was genius. It was genius on the part of Nancy Pelosi to find common ground between Democrats and Republicans and then to quote them and then to demonstrate that modern Republicans do not align with their former <laughs> leaders. <laughs> so I think this kind of shows that uh, one party is consistent and one party is not being consistent. One party uh, promotes uh, inclusion and... Um, trying to help the, the lower and middle classes. One party's not. <laughs> One party's not. Um, and why would I even care as a Canadian? I tell you why I care. 1929, the stock market crash. We could pretend to ignore the United States, but stuff that they do south of the border affects us. And I think we all of us have to uh, keep up with that and make sure it doesn't happen uh, in Canada. As a Canadian, I don't want this kind of weirdness happening up here. And uh, and it can. It can. Um, I just want to make a reference now to Ezra Levant. Ezra Levant uh, is Canadian media personality, conservative, political activist, writer, broadcaster. Uh, he's the founder and former publisher of the Western Standard, former columnist Sun Media, and former host and, and of a daily program on the Sun News Network from the channel's inception 2011 until its demise in 2015. Uh, in 2015, he founded the Rebel Media. All right. Now, uh, just a simple Google search, uh, I came came upon this press progress. Right. Uh, and this is a little bit old. It's uh, a year and a month old. But uh, this was fascinating. You just go look this up yourself. Here's a look back at the worst moments from Rebel Media's year of hate. So these are, these are Canadian alt-right folks. Okay. Uh, these are just the headlines. Okay. So in January 2017, Ezra Levant tries to make money off of mass murder. That's one headline. February, Rebel Media's anti-Muslim rally draws conservative leadership candidates. Hmm. Yep. So you can be anti-Muslim and pull out conservatives. Interesting. Rebel Media host defends fascism. 
All right. Uh, uh, as a side note, I really recommend CBC's Ideas. Uh, they interviewed Henry Giroux, and uh, he made a brilliant case about Trump being an American fascist. Brilliant. You, you have to, you have to. Maybe I'll put a link here on the video because that was brilliant. Uh, in merit, Rebel Media's host Holocaust video causes international incident, as it should. Rebel Media's host calls for a holy war to retake Bethlehem. Very strong religious thing on the right. Very strong. Um, dogma, you know, where dogma takes place over reason and science. It's uh, curious. Uh, April, Rebel Media host defends white supremacists who punch women in the face. Hmm. May, Rebel Media's White House correspondent linked to disinformation campaign targeting French elections. Rebel Media host arrested by British police. In June, Rebel Media hosts disrupt Shakespeare in the Park. July, Ezra Levant and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones pat each other on the back. Proud Boys attempt to justify scalping. August, Rebel Media host pals around with white supremacists in Charlottesville, and then all hell breaks loose. Rebel Media's links to foreign cash and anti-Muslim think tank exposed. September, Rebel Media staff are linked to extremist campaign to lead far-right UK political party. October, Andrew Shear taps Rebel Media director to run 2019 conservative election campaign. Yeah, so the leader of our conservative party called the PCs, the Progressive Conservatives, that leader, Andrew Shear, associates with Ezra Levant. Yeah. November, climate change press conference goes off the rails. December, everything's fine. <laughs> Looking back at 2017, Levant tells viewers, it was a good year for Rebel. <laughs> but acknowledges Rebel Media said some goodbyes because her talent was so good. They were hired by billionaires. So um, what's the connection here between uh, Americans and Canadians? Well, we're seeing some unhealthy stuff in the United States. I, I just quoted Nancy Pelosi. She demonstrated, and it's like she knew this would happen, that were she to quote any common ground between Democrats and Republicans, which is what politicians should do, they should find common ground, and, and you're supposed to work on behalf of your constituents. Now, if you quote, they don't even applaud. They don't even applaud their former leaders, right? The only saving grace in Canada, the, the silver lining to this, to this cloud, is that these extreme right-wing or alt-right attempts in Canada, yeah, they don't, go, they don't go over very well. So I'm just quoting Wikipedia here, talking about Sun News Network. They struggled financially, losing $46.7 million over a three-year period, with a loss of $14.8 million in 2013 alone. Apparently, their peak viewership was 8,000 people, and so they folded. This is the one saving grace in Canada. We don't have this extreme right wing. Uh, we have mainly the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and CTV, Canadian Television. And generally, we can, Canadians, whether you're right or left, we can agree on facts. And when you have these alt-right folks in Canada go to extremes and push conspiracy theories. Yeah, there's 8,000 Canadians that tune into that. Only 8,000. You know, there's 35 million of us. Those are good numbers that I can, I can live with. Um, we all have to be uh, super careful. And uh, I think it's time that we respect um, science and logic and and uh, agreeing on facts a and that both sides aren't to blame both sides are not to blame there's one side kind of mired in um, a dogma in uh, an ideology uh, that's not connected to science or logic or or reason